Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. For this video, I had planned to go ahead and get some of the image tracking set up. Now, for whatever reason, I was able to get this working perfectly fine on my office PC. Uh, however, when I tried doing it on the home PC and recording this, I just can't get the image stuff to actually track and spawn the objects and things. So I'm going to leave that for next week when I can, can do some cross-checking against how I've got it set up in the office and how I've got it set at home. Uh, more so than anything, just to make sure that uh, we look at fixing the bugs that you might potentially encounter as well so hopefully I've got some more answers for that next week so that's going to be delayed. For this week what we're going to be doing though is I found another pack which is really handy uh, actually provided by Android themselves and it's the official AR Core SDK and demonstrations for the Unreal Engine. So I'm going to show you where to download these and you can see a little bit of it playing in the background at the moment and it just provides things like better tracking and it's got a really nice way to provide some grid layout to demonstrate where the different planes are. We can see that it's got some really good tracking for vertical geometry as well as horizontal geometry um, and just things like that. So for this week, I'm gonna go through that instead. And then next week we can build from, hopefully this, I'll probably use this project rather than the Epic example, just cause it's got that nice dynamic. Um, and it's actually a completely dynamic and procedurally generated plane which is being made to show this nice grid effect where the floors are and things. Um, and the other thing to look out for is you've got different colors. So where it's tracked something on my table that will give it one color, I think it was gray. And then the floor will be a different color, the walls will be a different color. So it's also really easy to distinguish which pieces are classed as different and separate pieces of geometry. So to get access to this project, it's completely free. I'll provide the link to this web page in the description below so you can go and navigate to that very simply. And there's a few things that we have access to here. So I'd say just download the whole thing so you can clone a download using this button just here. Uh, I've personally just gone ahead, got the zip format and then unzip that and you'll be given the augmented images pack, the cloud AR pin, the computer vision and hello AR Unreal. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Hello AR Unreal just because that is the, the new content I find really interesting and really useful. And again, this is something which I find quite weird is that I've had the augmented images working on one system and not on this system uh, because that is using the AR core specific image recognition rather than the Unreal plugin and setup that we've been using so far. Uh, now I've not actually gotten around to using the cloud AR pin, so that's something I'm going to have to look into. I'm learning a lot of this as I go along as well, just because there's not very much out there on it at the moment, and also not too sure what computer vision is. Okay, so when you've got those unzipped, you should have a folder looking like this. Like I've mentioned, I've got the Hello AR project uh, ready to go. Now you will need a C++ compiler of some sort, because this does have some C++ classes included. And in fact, this is going to be one of the things I recommend you look through, uh, because part of that is where the procedural mesh is being created for the surfaces. But when you have that, make sure you've unpacked this and launched the project. And then we can have a look around and see what it's doing and just get an idea of what this kind of offers over the default Epic AR template that we that we currently have. Okay, so inside of the project, like I mentioned, the first thing is that we have our C++ classes folder now. Um, and inside of this, we have the AR plane actor. Now this is going to be really handy. I think what, what I've mentioned in the past is trying to find some kind of nice way to subtly show where the geometry is rather than having all of the boxes and everything being drawn like we've seen in the past that can become a bit cluttered. You may have noticed we had a lot of different geometry being tracked but because it was a fairly opaque kind of uh, dynamic mesh that was being made it wasn't quite as overbearing you could still see where things were and it was quite easy to place things on surfaces when you knew where they were. So I definitely recommend coming into this. It is quite a big class and there's quite a lot going on. So I'm not going to break it down bit by bit for the video at the moment, but it's definitely something to look at if you want to get a better understanding of what's going on. Now, the main things that we do have set up in here, though, are the, uh, the materials and everything, obviously, for the plane and the AR core plane actor inside of the blueprints folder, which is simply a child class of the plane C++ class I've mentioned. So we can see that from the class settings. It's a child of AR plane actor. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention, this is something that I'm going to be taking out and changing, is back in the Blueprints folder, we have the data file. So this is the AR session config we have here. Now, this is actually slightly different to what we set up in our own project previously. Uh, we can tell this because it has a new slot up here for the Google AR core image recognition. There are a few different options and the way that we get these, again, if we go to the miscellaneous folder, uh, we go to a data asset. Now, what we were creating were options from these up here, which were the uh, AR session config for our main session configuration settings. And what I was intending to use was the AR candidate image. Now, this is the one which should hopefully work across platforms. So if you're trying to target 
Apple and Android devices, these are going to be the options you want to stick to. Now, what this is using, because like I mentioned, this is provided directly from Android, they're using the Google AR Core. So this is going to be specific and targeted to the functionalities and the setup for the Android devices. Now this is fine, and in fact, when we look at the images, this does actually provide, if we create one of these, uh, this actually provides a lot more options for the images because we can have up to 20 images stored at a time, and we can track all of those in real time. And to do that, we just come in, add an entry, add our image into this entry, and then that would be tracked when we have that all set up. As I mentioned, I haven't quite worked out what I have, I've missed on this system to get that working, so I'm gonna come back and look at this another time. Uh, but the reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm gonna delete this, and I'm also going to replace the AR session config, just because I don't at the moment want to use the Android specific ones. So if we come back in, we will create our miscellaneous uh, data type again, so I'll go to misc and data type, and I'm just gonna create the standard AR session config like we had previously, and I'll call this D underscore session config again. With that done, we can open this and go back in and again, take a look just to confirm that we have this set up as we want, and we can also compare this against the Google option. So we can see the actual, the main settings that we have between both of them are very similar. We've got the, the main actual AR settings are in fact taking the same inherited options. Uh, it is purely this AR core augmented images, which is different. And again, like I mentioned, if you actually include this, a lot of people are saying that it's very unstable and it's actually very hard to get the AR core specific image database to build successfully in a lot of projects. Uh, there are current workarounds I've seen on the forums. Uh, it seems as though you're gonna have to use a, a source built engine version to get a lot of it working. So I'm, personally, I'm just gonna wait for this to stabilize a little bit. It's not something that you really need. Uh, and a lot of projects is having like 20 images available. Uh, and it just means that if you wanted to get a lot of images being scanned in a scene, then you can still do this with the standard Unreal implementation. It just means you're gonna to have to change the session type. And that's again, very, very simple to set up. So with the D uh, session config ready to go, we can go into the class which is housing this and we'll just replace the AR session config so it's not using that anymore. So this is all done inside of the Hello AR manager. So if we open this class up, uh, like we've done ourselves, this is gonna be done on the event begin play. So we can see at the moment it's currently using the AR session config and we can just change this to just be a standard AR session. So again, you will notice that it's currently set using the start AR core session, so we're gonna to need to replace that as well. And we can then just paste in our uh, data asset. And this is again, something which might be interesting just to note, is if we try and replace the AR core session with ours, it doesn't have that kind of flexibility. But if we use just a standard start AR session, then we do have the flexibility to use either the Unreal data class or the AR core data class. So we're gonna go with the Unreal option here, plug that in down here, and again, that should now all work perfectly fine. With that done, uh, this is again, we can build this out, and that's another thing I wanted to mention very quickly, uh, is in the previous videos, I recommended we'd I recommended that we go down, package the project as Android, and then use the ATC option. Uh, for some reason, I thought that was the universal option, and after checking up on it, it's actually the ETC one. This is gonna be the option which will be guaranteed to work on any version of Android, regardless of the hardware uh, rendering that that device is using. Now, for me, I don't personally know what hardware rendering options my devices have. So this is generally gonna be the safer option for a lot of people. Uh, the only real difference between these is that if you do know whether you're using something like OpenGL or Vulkan, then you can get more performance and better results from using the correct one. So that's gonna be something to look into for your specific handset. Uh, like I said, I haven't done that for mine yet, so I, I'm even not sure. So I've just been working with the ETC1 and that seems to work for everything. So I'm gonna build this out as the ETC1 option. And again, uh, I've already got this working because I've actually included that at the beginning of this video now to show the demonstration of what you can expect from this alternative option for the AR template. So hopefully that's been useful. Like I said, I just recommend with this one, there's a lot of really interesting content made and some really pretty useful approaches to demonstrating what the user's gonna be looking at and what's gonna be classed as valid geometry. So I definitely recommend going through all of the different classes in this project, especially the dynamic plane C++ class, see what's happening in there and see if you can take any of that for the projects you'll be using. So I'll leave this video here though. As always, if you've enjoyed this or found the video useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.